know that oxygen plus glucose equals energy and it's carbon dioxide, right? All of your cells need two basic things to function, and that is oxygen and glucose. There are two types of metabolism in your cell, which we've talked about before. You have your anaerobic, which uses no oxygen, has a low energy of output, and creates pyruvic acid. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And okay, then we have aerobic metabolism, which uses oxygen, uses a higher level of energy, and then also carbon dioxide. And remember that this, these types of metabolism are not, you know, it's not one or the other. They're both components of the same system. Uh, with growth metabolism, with growth metabolism, glucose will enter the cell along with oxygen. Let me see that. Right here, here's the glucose molecules that enter the cell. Okay, there's a process called glycolysis. Did I say that right? Close? Mm -hmm. In glycolysis, this glucose molecule is split. Okay? When that molecule is split, it releases a very small amount of energy, and then pyruvic acid is produced as a result of that reaction. Okay? Then what happens is this pyruvic acid and oxygen enter into a, a cellular area called the mitochondria, which are like the little energy factories of the cells. And they take this pyruvic acid and this oxygen, and it breaks down the pyruvic, ac pyruvic acid, okay? And uh, that creates our CO2 and water, and it creates a higher level of energy. That makes sense. How was that? Does that sound about right? Pretty much to the point where actually glycolysis occurs outside in the cytosol. Say that one more time? In the cytosol, I would say. And it enters, and once it's split, and it goes through glycolysis, it's probably, what you said, of course, the prior rule, then it enters the mitochondria, and it goes through the Krebs cycle, where ATP is produced. Can you explain the Krebs cycle just a little bit for us? Yes. Y'all listen? Mm -hmm. This is a little bit. Um, the Krebs cycle, it goes through a chain where it adds some carbons, Add two carbons, and then another carbon jumps off, and another carbon acts on, and it, it, it forms a bunch of acids. And, and basically, what it boils down to, you go down to mitochondria, let to a transport chain, and, and you and you end up like with 23 ATP, then it's some triphosphate, uh, CO2, and water. Don't get all hung up on that. It's cool enough. Which basically produces energy. Right. It's your ATP. energy to boot. Yeah, ATP is energy. Right. Push your, yeah, push your cells to work. Or, well, what I want y'all to see, uh, for normal functioning of the cells, all right, people, people who are not in shock, normal functioning of the cells, we have glucose entering, glucose gets split here, all right, the glycolysis, releases a small amount of energy, and produces pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid and oxygen go to mitochondria, where the pyruvic acid is broken down, creates ATP, energy, and CO2. Okay? Turns into lactic acid. 
right. Now, normally, we do produce a small amount of lactic acid anyway, and I lost the discussion of the exercise. Right? The problem is when we have an excess of accumulated lactic acid, it becomes toxic to our system because without adequate waste removal, the lactic acid in your system will now decrease the pH level in your blood, causing us product, a condition known as metabolic acidosis, which, if left uncorrected, will lead to death. So, anaerobic metabolism and aerobic metabolism, they're not, it's not a one or the other procedure. They're both part of one whole procedure. It's just if you don't have oxygen, you're cutting half your procedure out. Does that make sense? You, know, you don't need to do the second half because there's no oxygen. Does it make sense, Joe? You got it? Yes, no, maybe. Now it's time to ask. Think of it like it's it's still the cell is still living. It's just not making energy. Then it's just making the lactic acid in that, at that point. You still got a Twinkie. You just don't have the, the filling to it. <laughs> All this stuff will come together later on when we start talking about these different types of shop. Though and you'll see why. Yeah. It's important to know this because th this is this is directly dealing with what we're going to be talking about very shortly. It'll, it'll all click soon. Yeah. Well, you're sitting here now saying, why do I have to know this? I'm going to figure to tell you why. <laughs> or Andrew what, needs to tell you why. What, what you have to remember is that cells make tissues. Tissues make organs, organs make organ systems, and organ systems make you. Alright, so it all boils down to the cells. So when the cells start to die, the tissues start to die, the organs start to die, the organ systems start to fail, and then you die. But it all boils down to what's going on with this little guy right here. You know, you know we're going to talk about the sign of symptoms of shock, you know, the high pulse rate, the low blood pressure, and the sweating, and the rapid breathing, and the so on and so forth. And it's all going to relate back to what's going on in the cells. You know, this will all be explained later. It'll, it'll click. It'll be, so. All right. That, this pretty much is going to conclude the very basics of cellular metabolism. Any questions on how we bring in oxygen and take some glucose and make some energy with that? Any questions on what we've done so far? Going on to the cardiovascular system. This should be a big review from chapter four. If nothing to know, impact the new. Nothing has changed. Right. The cardiovascular <laughs> system requires three intact pieces to function. 
right? We know that is a working part, right? We have to have a pump that is a closed loop of blood vessels. We have to have, you know, a system of pipes, an intact closed system of pipes. And then we have to have an adequate volume of blood to circulate through the system. So you gotta have a pump, the pipes, and the fluid. If you take out any one of those components, it knocks out the whole system. Think about it like the water fountain in the hallway. Uh, we have the Macon Water Authority who takes the water from the lake, who filters it, who pumps it through the pipes so that when I get thirsty, I can go get a drink of water from the water fountain. All right? Now let's say that out on Eisenhower, we break a water main. All right? So all the water is now leaking out. Going backwards, we're still taking it from the 